Hey guys and welcome back to Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. We're here in Guaha Lagoon to finally track down the first piece of the Beanstar and uh, when you know it, it decided to go on holiday in a tropical region no less. So alright for some, here in the UK at the time of this recording it's fucking freezing Mr Bigglesworth. You know, I'm over down here in the south, obviously, uh, where things are still relatively warm. Although, now that it is November, it's finally starting to get a little bit chilly. Like, five degrees or so. But <laughs> since I've lived in Florida all my life, if it five degrees drops below what I'm used to, I instantly start getting the sweater together because I simply cannot stand it. Ah, uh, yeah, the autumn slash fall and winter clothing styles. Good stuff, good stuff. Now, uh, do you remember uh, what actually goes down in Guaja Lagoon? Um, I know what we're going to do near the end in terms of the boss, but I don't seem to entirely remember everything in between. Uh, yeah, that's the part that uh, my mind always skips over, because, you know, I guess in any other game you could call it busy work, but here I find it fun. Why? Because I'm biased, that's why. Well, I mean, uh, at this point, uh, since we are gathering the Beanstar, the uh, plot kind of devolves into more episodic uh, side adventures, in a way. And, uh... I have to admit, most of the time, that can bug me, because I'm somebody who likes a very tight, coherent, you know, kind of storyline. But this is Superstar Saga, it's a little goofy, it's a little fun. I don't mind that as a sort of diversion from the main thing. I mean, you know, Bowletta and Fawful, they're still in the background, still searching for the Beanstar. So it's not like we're not on a objective that's important to the main storyline, you know what I'm saying? Well, let me correct you there slide. They want us to search out the Beanstar, because I guess when Bowletta uh, was fallen, she was like, hmm, finally, I'll let the idiot hero do all the work for me. It's perfect. Well, okay, Gladys should have just done that to begin with in some way. I mean, I guess that's what she was thinking of in terms of, you know, getting the Mario Brothers to release the controls on the Beanstar so that she could steal it, but that backfired in her face. What's to say that this particular attempt isn't going to do the same? Hmm, well, I guess we'll just have to watch on and see, as will you, dear viewer. So, we have come to the home of Gigi and Mary, the hand specialist sender. We're about to get another power-up. I think probably the last one in the game, unless you, you know, you're going after the secret scrolls and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true as well. Um, uh, I don't necessarily, I'm trying to remember what exactly happens, because it's been so long, and again, it's been like a week since we've done a uh, commentary. So naturally, my brain has just kind of pushed that all out of my head as more pressing matters take over. I mean, considering what's been going on recently. So yeah, I'm kind of trying to catch myself back up to speed here real quick. This is the first of like two or three instances in the game where you're required to pay like a large sum of money, like 200 coins here. That's on the lower end of the scale in terms of like mandatory payouts the game expects you to uh, do. And um, yeah, I would recommend not running away from battles as much as possible from this point on. Number one, you'll be underleveled, like I was in my initial run. And uh, number two, you'll be underfunded as well. So just get in there, get your hands dirty, pick up the coinage and move on with your day. You buy at this point, you know, 200 coins really isn't a huge uh, drop in the bucket, especially if you've been fighting everybody. And the battles, uh, you know, again, they're not too bad you know, up until this point. So you should be able to take care of this without too much problems. Again, we have another red and green sibling duo thing going on. I believe that started with the Starshine brothers at the beginning of the game. Yeah, the Starshade brothers, and then, um, obviously the Hammer brothers as well is kind of a callback to that. And then the other Hammer brothers is a callback to that. So there's a lot of hammers in this game. Man, you know what this instantly reminds me of? This reminds me of, uh, 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 what was that, you know, thing you could do in Dragon Quest, where you get a quote-unquote puff puff massage, but it's heavily implied that she's uh... fucking the main guy. You don't know about that? You don't remember that? No, I, I, well, I don't play Dragon Quest for a start, but I remember seeing on Twitter recently that they recreated that in, like, I think it was, like, Dragon Quest-specific DLC for Final Fantasy, like, 14 or something. Oh, they actually put that in Final Fantasy XIV? Well, I mean, it's um, owned by the same company, that makes sense, but still. I, I mean, considering the fact it's basically a euphorism for sex, you know, I'm kind of surprised to see it uh, in Final Fantasy, actually. Luigi, your, your hand's kind of shocking right now. Oh, jeez! That does make it a problem. <laughs> ah, hmm. 
I can see where this is going. A tutorial, of course. Uh, 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 naturally, that's uh, where my mind went when we were talking so much about hands and being a hand technician. What I kind of wish they could have done in this game, uh, you know, because there's this big emphasis on, like, cooperative, you know, kind of combat styles and things like that. And, uh, obviously what we're getting here is we're getting new hand techniques, which will later unfurl into new, uh, brothers moves. I kind of wish they had a technique where they somehow combined both the thunder hand and the firebrand into one, like, super attack. You know, like a big elemental thunder fireball. I just think that would have been kind of rad. Yeah, what well, that caused the whole thing to blow up. Yeah, well, no, 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 I'm just saying, like, you know, Mario is the passion, but Luigi is the control. You know, the thunder keeps the fire from getting too out of control, I think. Look, I'm not an elementalist, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's how it would work. Yeah, I'm half of that. I'm just a mentalist. Thank you very much. And they're getting a lot of mileage out of these underground sprites. I mean, back there, you know, when he was paying off the guy at the counter in order to get the massage here. Like, they used the same uh, turning over back sprite that they did with Tollstar, like, way back in the beginning of the game. Yeah, I'm fine with, like, stock animations for RPGs and whatnot. So I just make it charming and we're good to go. So yeah, just stick your electric finger up the other guy's ass and then you can execute a new move. Is this a fucking, like, metaphor for a shocker? What the hell's going on? <laughs> oh my god, I think it is a shocker! <laughs> okay, well, we get new overworld abilities now, not seen since, like, the heyday of part two of the HFC play for a Mario Luigi Superstar Saga. Not a and hammers, obviously. But uh, using the Thunder Hand, you can basically lock both, like, Mario and Luigi together and, you know, walk like that. I kind of prefer when Mario's in control, because, you know, I'm all about speed and whatnot, I love me some Sonic games, and um, I, some of the stuff they ask you to do with, like, the fun hand ability can be a bit clunky. Uh, we'll see it in a little bit, actually, but uh, I, I guess you need to see it in motion before you understand my plight. Yeah, please don't call it electrical tickle power. We all know it is a shocker. You know, look, just as long as they don't have to demonstrate a steamer is what I'm trying to say, okay, right? Because right? I mean, fire calm steam. Calm it down. It's Friday. It's meant to be the weekend. I know you're getting excited, but let's not go there. Well, to be fair, I did just slam down an entire 20 ounce bottle of Pepsi Max <laughs> before I came on today. Fair enough. Okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no, it's Bast. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, 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 wait, no, 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 that was part of the animation, I'm sorry. I thought you could legit just kind of back up and just smush her into the wall. I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. That's the only way to demonstrate this power. I can't look, you have to squish me. Alright, now it's Red One's turn. What if you had, like, the wrong hand selected? This is my gravy hand. Uh-oh, I don't think I can use a brother's power with this. Okay, select so, like, the pimp hand and use it to do double damage. God, this is looking like a pimp hand. You're shooting a- No, you're lighting a fire under her ass. You're getting her motivated <laughs> to take on life. Jesus, Nintendo, what the hell were you smoking when you wrote this script? I don't know, but I kind of want some because Superstar Saga's script is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's very tight, it's very witty. This is basically like a super quick dash move, and you know, off the top of my head, based on what I do remember, uh, I found they require you to use the dash move more than the thunder hand, you know, kind of, uh, electric join together move, you know, just to kind of hit shit really hard and really fast, but I, for the life of me, I cannot remember a particular instance where I have to use the thunder hand bros move on the field. I'm Again, like you said, it will come up, and I'll be reminded of it, but off the top of my head, pff, I don't know. <laughs> Two words, mate. Jokes end. Oh, oh, yeah, jokes end. That's gonna be fun to talk about. Okay, just use this again. Now, I want you to use your power to smack into this gigantic cannonball. Sounds legit. Well, Mario, yeah, you have a hard enough head. Just, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> well, Mario's not the one taking the hit. Luigi's in front this time. Dude, they should have had a version of this, like, I don't, where, you know, uh, he does this to Luigi, but then Luigi brings out his hammer, and it does, like, a supercharging hammer attack. That'd be rad. I was thinking the same thing, actually. That would make for a really cool move in battle. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and, uh, you know... Nothing in life is free. You don't get special moves without, like, the NPCs who taught you those moves requiring something. So we're going to have to use the Thunder Hand and Firebrand abilities to collect a couple of bean pearls in this here cave. To be fair, we already did sort of pay the price by having to sit through the tutorial, which can't be skipped, so there you go. 
It is kind of odd that jellyfish are teaching us this ability. You know, you would think that the last thing a jellyfish would want to get associated is fire and thunder, but there you go. Mm, well, I suppose it could weather fire, but uh, electricity, that's a no-go. So which one is tentacool and which one is tentacruel? Oh, I think they're both meant to be tentacool, mate. Too cool for school. Man, Tentacool was like my favorite uh, water Pokemon when I was playing the original, you know, Red, Pokemon Red. Uh, I'm, although these days, if I were to do it again, I'd probably get my boy Kingler. Because oh, yeah. over the years, I've developed such a huge appreciation of Kingler. Even though it's kind of shit, admittedly, from what I've heard, Crab Hammer's kind of lame, supposedly. Uh, I guess, you know, talking in the competitive sense. But I don't know anything about that, so <laughs> just take that with a grain of salt. Oh, flashbacks to our Pokemon X playthrough and you discussing competitive stuff. Wrongly, I might add. Well, I mean, that was the only choice I had to make. I was wearing a choice scarf at the time, after all. Of course, of course. Okay, let's go get these bean pills or whatever. I'm not sure if I want to get bean pills that have been growing underground. I mean, I understand there's like a lot of vegetables that grow underground and they're perfectly otherwise fine and tasty, but still, I would be concerned. I didn't expect that at all. Why is the sound effect still going in the background? I don't know. Huh, that's interesting. I, I can't recall whether that happened in the original GBA version of Superstar Saga. I've encountered like a few audio hiccups with like the virtual console version. I don't know if that's my recording software or not, because I have my television on mute when I record, just so sound doesn't bleed. Now those fat bastards that Tom uh, knocked over uh, back there, if you go back to certain other areas, uh, they will actually be guarding, you know, particular items, and I do believe you have to knock over one of them in order to get access to the additional uh, Brothers move. Again, just kind of shooting off the top of my head here. No, absolutely wrong. Disgusting. Terrible. Mistakes! Mistakes all up in my playthrough here! <laughs> alright, alright. Ah uh, yeah, just clip through Mario Sprite. Good stuff. No, oh, it's glowing and it's radioactive. I'm sure that will be useful. I guess that's what happens when you leave it underground. <laughs> oh, they're so hype! A red pearl bean! Never seen one of these before! And I wonder if they, uh, if they made this game today, would they just kind of make a reference to Splatoon instead? With, like, the Squid Girls? Probably, but would that be such a bad thing? I don't know. I mean, like... Well, I mean, they were going to include other Nintendo characters as, like, cameos, obviously, but with the whole Starbeam system and things uh, like that. Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe a little reference down there. Although, I guess now I, I'm really just kind of wondering about how Splatoon is going to work out, uh, considering the Switch is coming out and the Wii U is pretty much dead. Uh, I don't know how long the servers will be running, actually. Like, I guess they'll have to port it over. I, I mean, I know they'll probably do that with Smash, because Smash fucking sells, like, hotcakes. So there you go. If Smash comes out on the Switch, I'm getting it, because I fell out of love with the game, honestly. I, I don't know, maybe it was just to do with the Wii U itself, which is a stupid, you know, line of thought, but whatever. But if it comes with all DLC, you know, I'll double dip, so to speak. I think it's been long enough. I don't have a feeling Nintendo's gonna drop all DLC on that. Like, it would be very rare of Nintendo to pull a fucking, you know, Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, you know what I'm saying? Man, it's been a while since we've discussed, like, Championship Editions, you know, without the slightest hint of jokes or irony or whatever. Okay, now we have to use the fun hand ability to slide in between these suckers, and uh, I don't know why the Jellyfish sisters couldn't do this themselves. I mean, they have access to the same abilities. That's true. I mean, aren't they the ones that set this up? Or I would presume that they would know the people who uh, set this kind of thing up so they could get access to these things? Maybe that's why they built their establishment on top of this place, so they had, like, primo access to the bean pearls. Well, I would just make it kind of easier to get access to them without having to go through the security, but that's just me, I guess. You don't get anything extra for this, by the way. I guess uh, they just wanted you to use your stuff correctly. It's teaching you how to use these moves hands-on, which is the best kind of tutorial, really. That was intense. We better save. Oh, yeah. Have you saved your game lately, viewer? I think I need to reload my game, like... If I had a file 10 years ago, I would probably reload that and try it again, I well, think. <laughs> I'm sad now. Hey, man, I, I, it, it's fine with me. You know, that shit's in the past. You just gotta move on. That's just how life is. Alright, so I'll quick shift it at the map here. 
You know, yeah, this is descriptive. I mean, it gives you a good general idea. I much prefer, like, actually the maps in the later games, where they actually use the bottom screen and gives you, like, a nice detailed map. So you really know where you are, and it's actually a really useful feature. I wonder what the next Mario Luigi game is going to be like, because if they don't have to develop for, like, the 3DS, well, how's it going to work on Switch? Man, I don't know, but it's like... I just want them to do something new and original again, because Paper Jam, as I said before, I mean, yeah, the gameplay was great, but the setting and the plot were just so boring that I fell asleep. I just want them to, you know, embrace that creativity that the series used to have. Mm. Yeah, take the best part of the Dream Team, you know, pair it with the snappiness of Superstar Saga's combat, uh, maybe some of, like, the inventiveness of Bowser's inside story, you know, with the tight mechanics of Paper Jam, and we've got ourselves a winner. So basically, guys, don't make a shitty game, is what, like, this is your first requirement, game must be good. Let me just write that down on the top of the design document <laughs> and go from there. I, I just love the idea of, like, what if Paper Jam's developers sitting there thinking, you know what, now that the game's out, I could have sworn we missed something. Let me just check the list. Oh my god, <laughs> good game! Game must be good at the top, and it's, like, underlined and, like, starters. It's like, oh shit, man. Alright, going under the sea again. There seems to be a running theme for Guaha Lagoon. You know, just walk through, you know, not having to breathe. Always love that. They just kind of ignore that kind of thing. Mm, we've had that discussion before, so let's not beat a dead cheap cheap. Now, this guy is new. Uh, I don't think you've actually encountered him before. He's like some super blooper that fires his tentacles like missiles, which is kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. I'm not actually sure what his tell is. I tried looking at his eyes to see if like he blinks differently, depending on what brother he fires at. But uh, really, he's kind of easy to counter. And, you know, there's no repercussions for bouncing on the torpedo Ted's that he fires. Yeah, the missiles come in slow enough that it's easy to see which brother it's heading towards, so it's not going to be too much of a problem. I'm really surprised that knockback brothers hit him uh, while he had spikes up. Because usually with that kind of thing, they will actually take, like, counter damage for that sort of thing. Well, he seems to be useless now, so I'm going in for the kill. Oh, I'm going to get you! Nope. I will be the one to defeat the Mario Brothers, just like a random fish underneath the ocean. Bowser's like, oh, well, huh. <laughs> well, if I knew that, I would have poured so much money into this hate campaign of mine. <laughs> what did I pay the Koopalings anyway? You know, I just get like a random army of killer fish. All right, pay attention. Bulletin boards must be listened to and adhered to. All right, so what you're saying is we need to use spin jump on these things. Yeah, that's kind of what I got out of it, too. Oh, this is fun. And now we're up here, we can actually swim at this altitude. I mean, it is a little kind of quirk of the design of this area, but hey, you know, whatever works. Indeed, indeed. All right, guys, that'll do it for this part of Superstar Saga. We shall see you next time, where the hunt for the first piece of the Bean Star continues. Goodbye, and enjoy the winter weather while it lasts. It's gonna be a chilly one. <laughs>